Is trash the building material of the future? According to a recent Brands report, construction and demolition contributes up to 50% of all waste generated here in New Zealand. In this video here, we'll look at a company that is transforming waste into a building material. I'll show you around their factory so we can learn about how the product is made. And stick around to the end of the video where I'll share my honest thoughts on using the product and show you it on the walls in our studio here. So I first heard about Saveboard when my 10 year old Jacob was watching the news. Jacob said, Dad, there's this company in Hamilton that turns milk cartons into products. You should go and find out about it. So Saveboard takes Tetra Pak, those cardboard, you know, normally it's like a one liter container from soy milk or oat milk. And what it is is layers of plastic, cardboard, aluminum foil, and it chops it all up, mulches it up, and heats it together and forms this board here. So I'm just inside the factory where they've been turning plastic into a building product. Let's go and take a look. So what can you end up doing with this? This is, this is part of our core of our board, oh, so board. How, how it works is that basically all these pieces under heat and pressure, all the, the plastic coating on either side join together to make the composite. It's still got a small... In this bay here we've got a mix of coffee cups and we also have stacks and stacks of shredded paper and the board is a mix of about 77% paper, 30% plastic, although the Tetra board is that perfect mix anyway. This machine here is shredding and cleaning old milk cartons and containers that normally would just get chucked out. And then just here we have bales and bales and bales of the stuff ready to go through and get shredded as well. So here's where it all gets fed in and we've got a mix of soft plastic and paper. The cool thing about the paper is it's all stuff that a normal recycling mill wouldn't take. It's like old magazines, like waxy stuff. And so they can chuck all of that in, goes up there. Then up in here into here it gets shredded. Into here, this is like a giant concrete mixer. So in here it just mixes it, tumbles it, moves it around, moves over to here and then along down here is the board production line and this is where they turn it from a product like this to a board. So right here we got the paper backing and then we got a plastic layer that glues it all together. Goes in here. Here they have the start of that product and then some more layers and we've got a fiberglass roll up there and then in here these get heated and pressed. While this board heats up, this is the perfect moment for you to go ahead, click subscribe and raise our subs. Right here we have a cold press. This here is the final product, but the edges need to get trimmed. So what happens is we cut 100 millimeters off here, yeah. because it's sort of soft on the outside and then it gets to the right density here. In here is the saw that trims the edges, and then in here is the edges trimmed. Final product here, and then we have a red board here cut to size. So 
So they can do anything from 2.4 to 3 meters, and these are 2.450, and that's it. That's how they turn plastic into construction board, wrap, roofing, lining, pretty cool. What we've done is we've segregated the waste into different color streams. So this board we make papers paper both sides, this board is finished like that, so... Do pe and do people plaster over this? Yes. It is rougher, like the surface isn't as beautiful as perfect plaster. Yeah. So that's the one I call my multi-use. You can see it's a little bit funkier because it's it's got mixed plastics. Here's some of the final products. It is a legit alternative product that is available right now that you can put on your build. They've got the technical manuals, got bracing ability. So I decided to give Safeboard a go in my studio here. Let's take a look at us putting it on the walls. So in the studio we're using three products. We've got the paper faced jib alternative on the walls here and that's already had a full skim by the plasterer ready to get sanded and it will be painted over the weekend. This is called the Meadow Fresh product. So obviously these are old Meadow Fresh cartons. And then this is called the Explosed Black. I have seen this being made with Otis Milk cartons and I've seen a couple of cafes have started to use this as wall liners. Really cool to see it go full circle. Someone makes a milk, they put it in a container to give to a cafe. The cafe makes a coffee with the milk carton. They then send the carton to Saveboard. Saveboard turns it into a product which ends up as a feature wall in their cafe. And then the offcuts go back to Saveboard and into new sheets. How cool that we get to be a part of this cycle. So all four walls in this room have been coated with Saveboard and we're really stoked with the product. Everyone who comes into the studio loves it. First thing they do is like, you know, they touch it. Like you've got the Made in New Zealand logo there, you've got a QR code there, you've got like the Meadow Fresh logo. It's one of those things that's just like, wow, they're so cool. So it's been a year since I built the studio, it's been up on the walls, I've had a number of meetings in this room. It definitely works in a commercial or retail setting and definitely for feature walls, it gets rave reviews in terms of its look and finish and that's real cool. At the end of the day, Saveboard costs at least double what it would cost to line your house with a plasterboard product. They have to sort through all of the waste product before it gets turned into the board to go on the walls. Whereas, say, something like a plasterboard product, you're sourcing virgin materials and you can control that process a lot quicker. There are definite benefits to it, but I can't see that being taken up by the mainstream builders right now. In saying that, with the feature board, you're saving on paint, you're saving on plaster, and you're getting an amazing finish that you couldn't pay for. And so you've got to weigh that up. You've got to pick and choose where you're going to use it. And you've got to really embrace the look. At the same time, we were also looking at ways to tackle and reduce waste on our building sites. We've attempted to get recycling going. We've hit some resistance. We're still working through that. 
Yo, this is the reality of recycling. Half of the stuff is unfortunately going to end up at the landfill. Obviously we'll take the cardboard off, we'll put that in the bin here. We did fill up a skip bin over there full of metal, so we are making progress. The other thing is it's hard work, like we have had to go and load the trailer up ourselves, bring it all here, we're doing the running around. It's kind of like three steps forward, one step back scenario. It's something we would like to get better and better at. We see it as something where the industry is going and, and a change that we want to be a part of. This highlights a greater problem in the industry in general. We are exploring ways to recycle on site. We're exploring more eco-friendly products, but they are taking more time and more money. And ultimately we can't keep charging more and more for the homes we're building. There is a limit to how much of that cost gets passed on. Without a greater supply or a lower cost, it's going to be way harder to start incorporating these materials in the mainstream builds. What are your thoughts on creating sustainability in the construction industry? Comment below. And go ahead, click the subscribe button if you want to see more deep dives like this.